Welcome to Go Live TV, the future in your hands. The only multicultural IPTV station that brings communities together. Over 2.7 million people have already watched. Go Live TV, anytime, anywhere. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to History Makers TV. I'm your host, Derek Schneider. We are in for quite an episode today. Wherever you're watching from, especially if you're on our YouTube channel, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this. Let people know about this, because this is a special broadcast today. And, and because of that, <laughs> I'm not going to waste any time, but I want to jump right into it with my good friend, Neil Campbell, who's with us. He's actually the Canadian Director of Family Foundations Canada, and I think we're going to see something pop up on the screen there, the website, familyfoundationscanada.ca, also the Dream Institute, which we'll touch on a little later, but Neil, it's such a pleasure to have you here, all the way from Calgary, right? Yes, yeah, it's great to be here, Derek. It was great to be with you on Sunday, and just looking forward to a great time with you today. We had such a powerful service at History Makers Church on Sunday, mm. especially having Brian uh, and Bryn yes. Elliott yeah. uh, from M46? M46 Ministries. Did I get it? M46 yeah. Ministries, and they're actually going to be on History Makers TV uh, September 13th, I believe. But today, we're so privileged to have Neil. Would you tell us a little bit about your family, your wife, Annette? How did you get involved with Family Foundations? Sure, yeah. Well, my wife and I, Annette, we've been married for 43 years, and uh, we have three daughters, and they're married, and a couple of grandsons, and uh, a granddaughter. So we've got an amazing family. We just love to bless each one of them. And uh, I've pastored for over 30 years here in Canada, in wow. different places, in Alberta. I was in Kitchener-Waterloo for six years, and then back to Calgary. And uh, back in uh, 1999, uh, we were pastoring in Calgary, and Craig Hill from Family Foundations International, the founder, came and did a live seminar with 100 pastors, or 50 pastors and their wives, so there was 100 people. Wow. And uh, it was just a powerful time of transformation personally from my life. I just really experienced uh, some areas in my life that I didn't even know were there uh, that were really hindering the anointing and the flow of God in my heart and in my life. And so we began to build a relationship with Craig and had him come and speak in our church a few times and uh, did a marriage conference in Calgary. And then he asked us to begin to direct and lead the Family Foundations here in Canada and uh, we were kind of doing that, pastoring the church at the same time. And then back um, 15 years ago, uh, my daughter, youngest daughter, was just turning 16. And we were doing a night of becoming, a night of blessing for her. A night of blessing. Yeah. Wow, I'll be interested to talk about that in a moment. Yeah, and it's just a time of uh, where we had some teachers, her grandparents, uh, Sunday school teachers, ourselves. Just a time of impartation of identity, gender, and a destiny. Awesome, wow. So... So when you talk about family foundations, we're obviously talking about family. Yes. Uh, you know, what, what, what's the topic, the hot topic today, especially in Canada, the issue of family? Where is that at? Hmm. Where is that going? Talk to me about the state of the family in our nation. I, I know I'm taking you right into the deep <laughs> waters here, but just, just feel free. Yeah, well, I think really what we've seen, especially in the last five to ten years, is the deconstruction of the traditional family. The deconstruction mm. of traditional family. What does that mean? Well, really what they're doing is they're re when you start to redefine the definition of what family is, and 
you include a lot of other definitions from the traditional family. Now, there are, of course, families that are going to be made up of a, a father and a mother and children, uh, but there's also, there may be a single mom or a single dad, uh, but now they're, they're really redefining it to expand even to more than just blood relationships or common law relationships. It can be multiple different types of relationships, and so this deconstruction of the traditional family is uh, just making it acceptable to uh, just live alternative, different lifestyles. Wow. Yeah. W- would you describe it as a breakdown? I know we use the word deconstruction, but is the family unit being broken down in our society? And if so, what's the reason? Um, I think really just a lack of understanding roles in a family. And so with what's happened with uh, COVID, where everybody's kind of working from home, uh, kids are studying from home, and, and all those things, we really saw a lot of, um, just a lot of conflict, a lot of uh, just stress that are in the homes, uh, mental anxiety. And uh, we're just seeing just a lot of breakdown of the family. I just read a statistic yesterday from uh, Stats Canada that uh, almost 5 million people have separated since COVID. 5 million people have separated. That's right. Either from a common law relationship, a a dating relationship, or uh, a married relationship. Why? Why since COVID? Just the stress of COVID? I think the stress anxiety is bringing out a lot of... um, hurt in people's lives and so the hurt people hurt other people, hurt people hurt and so we just kind of seeing that 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 breakdown of culture breakdown wow. of society breakdown of marriage and relationships and that really brings a lot of st- that brings a lot of instability to families you know you touched on some things on Sunday morning that were so powerful as it relates to the role of the man mm-hmm. in the family and I, I think that that shook people a bit and it it's really no secret for the believer but maybe even the the Mm non-Christian, that there almost seems like men are being targeted in our society today. What is the importance of the role of men in the family Mm -hmm. and men in society? How does that factor in? I think really men are really kind of trying to find their identity, uh, that they're just, uh, they're wondering, what am I supposed to be? There has been sort of just this real attack on manhood. Wow. Um, uh, I listened to a lecture recently by Jordan Peterson, which was addressed to the churches in Canada and to the church in general in North America. And one of the things that he said is that that men are floundering in their identity because there, there's not those rite of passages. There's not those, uh, those, those affirmations of what a man is wow. supposed to be in our culture and society. In fact, men are often blamed now for all of the ills of society and yeah. all of the bad things that are happening. Now, there are some bad men, but generally, uh, they're just not knowing how to be a father, how to be a husband, how to, how to affect relationships. And maybe they haven't had fathers themselves, mm-hmm. and it's kind of this generational thing that, that goes on and on. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we've seen is that, uh, for example, in Calgary, I read a stat that 65 out of 100 students that graduate from high school in Calgary uh, will not have both biological parents living together or uh, still married. So 65 65. out of 100 students Mm -hmm. will graduate without both biological Mm -hmm. parents? Wow. And, And, you know, there are some really good fathers out there. And uh, they've, they, they're investing in their children mm-hmm. and investing into their lives. And, uh, but there's many that just because they weren't fathered, they grew up in a fatherless home, uh, they just don't know how to be a good dad. You don't happen to know some of those statistics that you shared on Sunday <laughs> off by heart, do you, of the effects of fatherlessness in a society? Uh, well, one is they're eight times more likely to be in prison, um, the one that. that really stuck out to me was 20 times more likely not to get A's in school. And, and often that time is because, you know, uh, if there's not a father present to kind of just listen to and put a child to bed, read with them at night, and just help them to learn the foundations. You know, single mom or single dad, they're so busy with, with what's going on, and they, they don't have the time always. And, and so they, they just don't have that guidance that they need. And these kind of statistics are public knowledge? Like, we have public access to these? Yeah, they're uh, Canadian stats, also in the UK wow. and, and in the US. So. And yet, the family unit is still being challenged as if there's not necessarily a need for a father to be in the home. This mm-hmm. is wild to me. Yeah, yeah. We were just recently in Singapore, and um, it's really interesting that uh, it's a secular 
society, a secular culture, but the, the theme of the nation is strong families build a strong nation. Strong families build a strong nation. And it's a requirement for parents to take parenting courses on how to, <laughs> you know, to raise their kids yeah. and, and how to uh, not pressure them, but rather give them choices and how to, how to act and, oh, you know, learn in society and culture. You know, I was amazed marrying my wife, who's Filipino. Mm -hmm. uh, we were in the Philippines. That's where the wedding took place. And the government actually mandates that you take premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. We went, and it wasn't even with a church. And so I wondered, well, what kind of premarital counseling will this be? And there's such a level of Christianity within the nation that this counselor, who we didn't know, was teaching the values the role of a man in the home and all of that i was i was completely shocked so i'm surprised that north american culture that we're throwing away such a value yeah yeah and and it's really hurting our young people you know so many um, young men and young women they're really not sure of who they are because of you know just the lack of blessing the lack of uh, training in their lives. Wow. You know, I've, I've kind of discovered that, um, you know, the role of a dad in the home is to teach, train, and bless his children. Teach them by his example. Teach them how to drive a car. Teach them how to read a book. Teach them how to, and, and he does that by, you know, they're watching him. They're, they're learning from him. And then dad can, you know, come alongside and train them how to drive that car. You know? wow. uh, I remember when our girls were younger, I would, uh, in Alberta, you can get your learner's license at 14. And uh, <laughs> so our oldest daughter, uh, she had watched me for 14 years and then she, uh, it's time for her to drive us. She got her learner's license and she drove our family, our other two daughters and I to school every day. And she, that, you know, that's how she uh, learned. And then uh, when she got her driver's license, uh, when she, on her 16th birthday, we tossed her the keys to the car. That's blessing. That's empowering them to prosper. Uh, Trusting her with the keys to the car is blessing? That's right. Talk, talk more about that. That's interesting to me. Um, yeah, so blessing is empowering somebody to prosper. And so, you know, she could get her learners, get her driver's license, and then I never give her the keys until she's 18. <laughs> I really haven't trusted her. I really haven't blessed her and said, hey, I'm going to trust you now. So that's, that's what blessing is. It's empowering them to, to prosper, empowering them to, uh, to excel and be in all the areas of their lives. Wow. Yeah. You mentioned blessing, and you, you touched a lot on this on Sunday, and mm -hmm. I know it's a major piece of Family Foundations. Um, when we think of blessing, we tend to think of kind of this very mystical favor that God puts on someone, or we say to somebody, God bless you. Mm -hmm. But what is the blessing, and how does it make a difference in people's lives? Well, the blessing is um, something that is more than just saying that I love you or that, I, that, I, that you're important to me. But blessing... Uh, is is literally um, coming towards your son, coming towards your daughter, wow. coming towards your wife, wow. and um, answering those questions in their lives of their value, uh, their character, who they are as a person. And uh, the the Greek or the Hebrew word for blessing is baruch. baruch. And that word means really to come towards or to empower, to prosper. And so the blessing is something that we can do on a, on a regular basis uh, in our families and in our homes. And it answers two basic identity questions that everybody has. The first one is, who am I? Identity. And why am I here? Destiny. You know, even Jesus was blessed by his heavenly father. Yes. I, I you, you, know, you think of the time when Jesus came down to the waters of baptism. And uh, Jesus is coming down. And John the Baptist says, behold the Lamb of God, his identity who takes away the sins of the world, his destiny. And then as Jesus comes up out of, the, out of the water, the Holy Spirit comes upon him, and a voice from heaven, his heavenly Father says, this is, this my, is beloved my beloved son, son in whom I'm well pleased. Wow. And so blessing is affirmation of love, hmm. not for what they've done, but for who they are. He's your Not for what they've done, but yeah. for who they are. And most people could probably say they grew up in a home where the father's love or favor was based on performance. That's right. Yeah. Not on identity. Yeah. Wow. And you know, and it's okay to praise your son or daughter for how well they did on that test. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, that's praise. Blessing is affirming them. It's loving them unconditionally, 
uh, no matter how they performed, you know, whether, wow. you know, and so that's just that affirmation, knowing who they are as a son, knowing who they are as a daughter. And, and that's what God has done for us, mm -hmm. not based on performance, but loving us for who we are. Yeah. And, and you know, Neil, you really exude this because even just now when we met uh, in the parking lot there outside Cheesecake Factory, you, I rolled down the window and you grabbed me, you said, how's my favorite apostle or something <laughs> like that? And there was just a sense of empowerment mm -hmm. uh, and approaching, coming mm -hmm. towards. Yeah. I love that. I've never seen the blessing that way, that the blessing is the Father coming towards. It mm -hmm. makes me think of the prodigal son. Is there anything there? Yeah, for sure. So uh, some people ask, well, how can I bless a prodigal? And, um, you know, really the way that the father in that story is able to bless the particle is he separates identity from behavior. He knows that his son has been wayward. He knows that he spent his money on wine, women, and song, and that he has <laughs> lived in, the, in a faraway place. But he separated and he welcomes his son home. And it was the father that came towards the son. You know, like the son is kind of feeling... Like, well, my dad, like, I'll just be a slave. Like, you know, I, I won't really. And yeah, the, the yeah. dad comes towards him and kisses him on the neck, and he, and he gives him the robe. And the robe is very significant because the robe is a sign of the blessing. Wow. The ring was the sign of the blessing. The shoes, the, the sandals, the, they're all symbols of the blessing and the affirmation of the father. And the father says, welcome home. Even though he was a prodigal. Even though he was a prodigal. It's beautiful. And... Uh, you know, really, that word prodigal is extravagance, you know, excess. And really, the one that was the prodigal was the father. You know, wow. he was given that prodigal love, <laughs> that excessive love, even though his son didn't deserve it. Yeah. He was still his son. And that's the same with us and God. You know, when, when we fail, which we all do, many times people kind of think, well, God's up there with a big stick and he's going you know, right. gonna, he's gonna to punish me or, you know, whatever. But that's not the way God is. God is, he separates identity from favor and says, you're my son, you're my daughter, I love you. And he loved us so much that he sent his son That's right. to die on that cross. So and you approached not, us, came right. towards us. Came. I, I think even the scripture with the prodigal son there is, well, he was afar off. Yeah. His father was already going out to meet him. I yeah. mean, this is just wonderful. Now, speaking of blessing, mm -hmm. uh, what are ways, firstly, you said something that I can almost hear people who are watching this right now asking again is he separates identity from what behavior identity from behavior right. i wonder if most people <laughs> maybe most is an exaggeration but have not had that in their homes yeah i think you know as as parents sometimes you know if we've got shame or we've not been blessed in areas in our lives, it's easier for us to shame people and to criticize and to be negative. Mm. And we actually curse the identity of our sons and daughters by, by being negative when God calls us to bless our children at every stage of their lives. And, and uh, in, the, in the ministry, we, um, uh, we talk about being blessed at seven critical times in a person's life. Blessing at seven critical times. Yeah. Okay, tell us. <laughs> So those seven critical starts at conception, conception. Um, and you know in the in the perf in a perfect world it's in the uh, covenant marriage in a marriage relationship, yep. uh, man and wife come together and they conceive a child, and the uh, they answer that question, uh, "Am I welcome in this world?" Am I welcome? Mm -hmm. Wow! And when a child is conceived out of wedlock. So unfortunately, what happens is sometimes that lie gets planted in their heart, yes. even at the point of conception. I've heard that. That I'm a mistake. I've heard that. But yes. when there's that wanting, that desire, like when you <laughs> when you guys got pregnant, you know, you, yeah. you guys posted it on Facebook. Yeah, you know, yeah, we're going to yeah. have a baby. <laughs> you are wanted. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're sending that message. And then uh, the second time is in the womb. And that is, is there a safe place for me? Hmm. And... Uh, we know that one of the most unsafe places in, is in the womb of a woman these days because almost 40% of pregnancies are terminated by abortion. 40%? 40%. Dear Lord. And so there's, it's not a safe place always. Or maybe they're in dangerous situations. There's all kinds yeah, of reasons yeah. why it's not a safe place. Yeah, so the baby can be receiving these messages of mm -hmm. I'm unsafe yeah. even at the womb. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then blessing at birth, it answers the question, will my needs be met? You know, we recently had a little, our baby granddaughter, Juniper. And, uh, you know, when Juniper came out and, uh, uh, you know, 
all of her needs are being met by her mom and by her dad. Like, she can do nothing. She is completely helpless. And so she's fed, she's changed, she goes to sleep, and then that whole cycle starts again in another two hours, you know. you just And that's considered blessing. Yeah, that's blessing. Like, you're meeting their needs. And uh, even the, the meaning of Juniper's name that her parents gave her means that she will be a shelter, that mm -hmm. she will be a... a a resting place, and wow. speaks of juniper bush that covered Elijah when he was being persecuted by Jezebel. And wow. so there's that, that safety. So even in the name, you know, yeah. and she has brought so much joy into our family yeah, and I into bet. her family. So it's just amazing. So that's the fourth one? Yeah. And then the, the, that's the third one. The fourth one is blessing at early childhood, and it answers, who can I trust in this world? Hmm. Who can I trust in this world? And, um, you know, where's that, that safe adult, that safe parent? And, um, you know, when a, often we've seen is that when the oldest child is reaching the age of 12 or even younger, when parents separate and then another person comes into that family situation, um, statistics shows us that they're 32, 33 times more likely to be abused emotionally, physically, or even sexually. Wow. You know, because there's, who are the people that I can trust in this world? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we need to come to that place. Hey, I can trust my earthly father. I can trust my mother, yeah. grandparents, yeah. Yeah. and other people that are in my life. Excellent. And uh, we want to make it a safe place for them. And then an important one is blessing at puberty and answers the question, do I have what it takes? Mm -hmm. And uh, we've designed a rite of passage weekends. Um, Jesus would have uh, had a, uh, a rite of passage when he was 12 years old. Uh, in the Jewish tradition, a 12-year-old boy uh, is, would have a ceremony, and uh, at that ceremony, he becomes a son of the law. And wow. so he doesn't no longer just kind of hang out with the children and the women, but he comes underneath the mentorship of the rabbis and also of his father. So yeah. Jesus, uh, where did they find Jesus after? Yeah, he was in the temple. In the temple, <laughs> studying and teaching. About with... his father's business. Yeah. yeah, and but then he came and he abided underneath his earthly father, uh, for the next 18 years of his life, where he became an apprentice uh, carpenter. You know, so he learned that, and then he was released uh, into adulthood, which is the next time. I just kind of just backing on that, uh, we're not from, uh, most people aren't from a Jewish culture, so we've designed father-son rite of passages. Father-son rite of passage. And yeah. Do you go camping or <laughs> hunting or what, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> well, camping, canoeing, uh, doing different things. We want to get dads away and from Get away weekend. from everything. Yeah, yeah, we're doing one in the Canadian Rockies uh, in September. Ooh. And uh, we've, just, we've already done one in uh, Colorado. We did one in Gatineau, Quebec, and in Singapore. And we just do these father-sons where we teach men our dads, how to become fathers, and wow. boys, how to become men. Wow. And we've designed a whole weekend that's pretty uh, intense, but fun and challenging. And we just teach, you know, what it means to be a man. How, how, does, it, how does a man in, a man in his work, yeah. a man in his worship, his walk with God, a man yeah. and how he should treat a woman, uh, a man and his integrity, his word, you know. So there's lots of things that we do throughout that weekend. Wow. And then we kind of culminated on the Saturday night where we kind of set it up like... Um, Survivor, and we've got tiki <laughs> lights and everything. We've got a big fire, and uh, we call and each of the young men. <laughs> <laughs> and we say, you know, we say, Derek, you're no longer That's a little boy. We call you into amazing. manhood. And then your dad will bless you. Yeah. He'll bless yeah. and affirm the attributes, your gender, your identity. Wow. But oftentimes before he does that, and we've, we've seen this many, many times, is that a dad will kneel before his son wow. and say, son, you know, I've been not the greatest dad. I've been angry. I've used anger. I've, I've done things that I'm not proud of. And I just want to repent and ask you to forgive me. And there's spiritual power in this. Oh. This, this isn't just uh, something nice to do here. This, this is real. There's spiritual power in this. It, it launches a son into his, that adult identity, and it changes the relationship with dad. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> dad now becomes that, father that walks alongside teaching, training, and blessing his son. I bet it changes the whole dynamic. And does it change how that son or daughter views their heavenly father? I, I, I think that our views of God are skewed by mm -hmm. how we've been raised. Does that change in a situation like that? For sure. And, and I think, you know, in most churches, we, we 
children, they'll get saved, they'll give their hearts to Jesus. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, and that's, that's important. That's a first step. That's the first step. But really, when you enter into the kingdom, it's understanding that Jesus came to show us the Father. Wow. 150 times Jesus spoke about our heavenly Father, and then 30 times he said he's your heavenly Father. And so it really does change their view of who the Father is and oh, grows, wow. brings them into deeper. And actually on that first night, uh, during the campfire, around the campfire, we talk about, you know, what's the most dangerous thing you've ever done as a man? And then we talk about the danger of, and the excitement and the adventure of following God. Wow. You know, we want to challenge them right off the first night. Neil, this is so <laughs> exciting, and I'm sure a lot of people would want to attend that <laughs> when they see this. Um, we've got five minutes less left. Give us the remaining two. Is it two more? Two more, yeah. So, uh, blessing at adulthood launches, and it answers that question. What am I called to do in this world? What am I called to do? And um, again, that's when you're launching them into uh, maybe going off to university or maybe they're going off to YWAM or they're, they're going someplace, uh, a formal setting where you said, you know what? We believe in you. We're standing behind you. We're going to bless you. We're going to launch you uh, into that next season of your life. Wow. Yeah. That reminds me of the history makers training. It does. <laughs> Blessing and empowering people into that, into their calling and yeah. purpose yeah. and destiny. And then that final time is old age. Uh, the, the Bible says that your children will rise up and call you blessed. And so on my dad's 70th birthday, uh, my, uh, my family gathered together and we did a, a eulogy for my dad. A eulogy. A eulogy. Yeah. Yeah. Because the Greek word for blessing is eulogia. Amazing. And so... I, and actually, I'm, I was staying at my dad's place, and he brought it out yesterday, last night, and said, here, remember when you said all these things? And I did. Wow. I remembered. It was the stories and the things and how he'd impacted my life. Neil, tell us quickly, if somebody's watching and they're saying, hey, I didn't get barely any of those mm -hmm. blessings, other than connecting with family foundations, what can somebody do? Ooh. Well, here's the first thing. It's never too late to get blessed. You know, it's That's never too sign. late to receive yeah. the blessing from the Father. Yeah. And uh, we've designed, uh, Craig Hill, our founders, designed a seminar called, uh, it's actually a weekend encounter called Blessing Generations. And yeah. you can find out about that on our website. And it really deals with those seven critical times of blessing. And it wow. deals with those, uh, those times in our lives when we haven't received it and how we can, what are the lies that we believed? Yes. And then how yeah. we can deal with those lies and then receive the Father's blessing in those times that we missed. Wow. And wow. as that kind of happens, then we're saying, okay, now that you've received that blessing, how do you give it to your kids? <laughs> <laughs> this is powerful. Mm -hmm. Neil, the time has just flown by. I want to remind everybody, uh, familyfoundationscanada.ca. That's mm -hmm. where you want to go. And when you go there, you're going to see something called the, Dream, the Family Dream Institute. There mm -hmm. it is. You can see right on your, your screen there, I think, Family Dream Institute. Click there to learn more how you can connect with this fantastic ministry and get blessed and experience all that it has to offer in the two minutes we have. Mm. Would you turn to the camera, Neil, and minister to people that are watching and people that will be watching? Sure. You know, maybe uh, you grew up in a home that was had a strong Christian influence or you had a good father and... Uh, the best thing you can do is you can honor him and bless him. But maybe you never received a blessing from that father or from your earthly father. It's never too late to get it because your heavenly father, he wants to bless you today. And so just in, as we're wrapping up, I just want to pray a word of blessing over you uh, and just right from the heart of father to your heart. So father, I thank you for each participant here. Father, I just bless their identity as a, as a man or a woman. I bless who they are. I bless their character. I bless their relationship. And I just hear you, Father, saying, you are my beloved son and daughter yes. in whom I'm well pleased. And I bless you today. I bless you with uh, that you would prosper in your soul, that you would prosper in your spirit, yes. financially, emotionally. You would prosper in everything that you do, that you are my beloved son and daughter, and I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. So we bless you today to prosper in all that you do and bless you in your relationship with your Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Neil, every time I hear you speak, light bulbs go on for me. You're coming back in late fall. We'll announce 
God willing. <laughs> we'll, we haven't settled on the dates yet, but we'll be announcing when that is so that you can connect with history makers and be able to go through one of these type of weekends and some of the things we've talked about. Uh, we, you'll be so glad that you did. We'll, that'll be done virtually and in person, and it's going to be a phenomenal experience. We'll have Neil back on the show, and I realize... We'll just have to do an hour, an hour-long program when you're back with us in the fall. Thank you for tuning into History Makers TV, wherever you're watching from. This has been so good. May you go with God and with the blessing. We'll see you next time. God bless you. <laughs>